I was driving around with some of my friends getting something to eat, and I saw a sign in the distance for KFC. It was supposed to say, now hiring closers, but the C had fell off. <laughs> now, if you don't get that joke, ask somebody next to you. I'm Horace H.B. Sanders. I am a uh, comedian, uh, actor, writer, father, husband, and uh, more importantly, a uh, child of God. It's a comedy show, buddy. <laughs> you gotta relax. Enjoy yourself. I have to tell people that sometimes. It's a comedy show. You're supposed to laugh. Some people, though, they, mm, they angry. I'm like, you gonna come. You saw the flyers. You got the ticket. You talked about it. You know it's a comedy show. But you still come with an attitude. Mm, I ain't laughing at nothing. Forget them jokes. <laughs> Some same kind of people get in the tub. I ain't washing nothing. <laughs> Keep that soap. <laughs> like, you were angry, man. My comedy started in college. I went to the University of Michigan. And I did a talent show. Uh, one of the fraternities on, ca on campus had a big talent show they would do every year. First two years I did it, I was a dancing act. I was dancing, I had a friend of mine that was a rapper. So he would rap and we would kind of make routines and dance. And then that kind of played out. And I was like, I can't sing. I'm not really a rapper. Eh, dancing is getting old. I like performing. And then this, this young lady, like every day for about two months, she was like, Horace, you should get in a talent show and do, do, do comedy. Because I would tell jokes on campus sometime at the cafeteria or whatever. So every day, literally, so finally one day I went and auditioned and got picked. And then when I did the competition, I came in second place, which was huge because the girl that won was phenomenal as a vocalist. So nobody was going to beat her. For me to get second was amazing. It's hard times when you got to make hard decisions. Like my mama called me last night, like, baby, my heart beat funny. I think I need to go to the hospital. Like, oh, mama, the hospital on the way to church tomorrow. I can't drive that way twice. Gas yeah, too high. <laughs> you hold off to the morning. <laughs> Take some aspirin and pray about it. <laughs> you always say the Lord know my heart. <laughs> Me being a, 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 especially in this, this era, a young black guy being clean as a comedian stands out by itself. I remember I had a conversation with God about it. I was like, maybe I should need to talk about you more. He was like, I want you to be yourself, be funny, and you don't realize you're making statements all the time. There's so many funny things out there. If I can make people laugh, if I can get them to forget about their problems or think about them and laugh about them, that's ministry right there. And then I just read the Bible and study, and there's so many funny stories in there. And just my life, I was like, well, we're supposed to be living epistles read of men. And a lot of times Jesus would do parables. He wouldn't just be quoting scripture. Or he would do stuff and say, don't even tell him it's me. You know, don't tell him my name. So I said, if I really want to be like him, just go about doing good. You know, being funny. Don't, don't preach on stage because they're there to see comedy. And then when the doors present themselves, they, you know, they will. I get some funny Jesus jokes. And then I realized, too, if I talk about the Bible, that's more universal than maybe a church because they have different denominations and, and different cultural things. But, you know, the Bible is universal, it's the most printed book in the world. So if I take stories out of that and do things, anybody can relate, even if they're not a Christian. Adam lived to be like 900-something years old. He was married for 900-something years. <laughs> he think 19 years is a long time. Could you imagine two, three, four hundred years of marriage? Can you imagine we had an argument that lasted for 500 years? <laughs> so it's... 488 years later, and you still ain't gonna apologize. Look, don't keep bringing up that apple, Adam, all right? You're a grown man. You said you do what you want to do. You don't listen to me now anyway. You shouldn't have listened then. I want them to have had a great time and to feel good when they're doing life. I want them to laugh at it, even if I'm talking about them. But if they like what I'm doing, if they think I'm funny, I think it leaves the door open for whatever else God wants to do through me or anyone else. So I'm content to be a planter or a waterer. Um, so yeah, I need them to laugh and think it's funny. It'll be an encouragement to me to be better and better what I want to do and uh, whatever God wants to do through me. Because I know this is, even though this is a lot, it's still just the beginning. So I'm going to leave y'all with this uh, one thing my dad always tells me. Please remember in life, no matter where you go, uh, that's where you'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. Appreciate you all this day.